Hi everybody, this is Dr. Eric Corum, founder of AIM7. Welcome back to The Blueprint, where we distill cutting edge science, leadership, and life skills into simple tactics optimized for your busy lifestyle and goals. Over the past several years, I've come to realize that in order to improve as a leader of myself, my family, and my team, I need to be a better decision maker. And it's something I've become fascinated with. How do the best decision makers think about problems? What are their mental models and frameworks for evaluating tough decisions? And so I'm going to start sharing some of my learnings. To be really clear, almost everything you'll hear from me is unoriginal. Rather, it's things that I've curated from the best of others. And a few of the resources that I've leaned heavily on are Shane Parrish's work on mental models, The Decision Lab, Annie Duke, and others. All right, so let's dig in. Have you ever worked with somebody who thought they were amazing at something? when in reality they were terrible, or maybe you thought you were significantly above average in your reading comprehension, and then you took a standardized test, and you found out you weren't actually a top performer, but were a poor performer. There's a name for this, and it's called the Dunning-Kruger effect. It's a cognitive bias that occurs when a person's lack of knowledge or skill in a certain area causes them to overestimate their own competence. The opposite is also true as well. Someone may excel in a specific area, yet they underestimate their ability. Some would call this humility, but the inability to see your ability can prevent you from expressing your giftedness. The Dunning-Kruger effect may impact you because you may not be able to identify your special talents. And when you excel at what challenges you, you may actually believe you're really good at that thing. When in reality, you are a below average performer approaching average levels. Now, I know that sounds depressing, but just hang in there with me. This may cause you to make poor choices around opportunities or careers you should pursue. Here's the key point. Understanding the Dunning-Kruger effect can help you discern when to trust your abilities and when to seek advice out from others who may view you more objectively than yourself. Also, when you think you are better at something than you really are, you miss out on the opportunity to learn from others who are more skilled or knowledgeable. The Dunning-Kruger effect also impacts our society. Sadly, those that are the most ignorant or the bottom 25% of any skill are often the most overconfident in their abilities and they share a ton of misinformation. Here's an example from my life. I was a walk-on football player at Texas A&M. I could see the difference between me and some of the scholarship guys that were playing in front of me. Now, that didn't mean I didn't work hard to get on the field, but I could see the difference. I could make an honest assessment of my skill, and then I could adjust accordingly. I had to adjust expectations, and I had to work harder just to make up some of that genetic ground or some of those other things that they had that I didn't have. Now, some guys I walked on with couldn't. They really thought they were better than the guys that were ahead of them that eventually got drafted and played in the NFL. That led to disillusionment and unrealistic expectations, and other people could see it, and it was just plain ignorance. This plays out in our democracy. Sometimes some of our most uninformed citizens are the most arrogant. What makes matters worse is not only are they resistant to learning, but they often share the most misinformation on social media or just by word of mouth, and they perpetuate this untruth. And this gets to the heart of the Dunning-Kruger effect. It's not just about a lack of information, but an abundance of misinformation. So why is this important? The Dunning-Kruger effect is important because it makes us aware of our own blind spots, and it gives us the opportunity to adjust our self-perceptions. Remember, it's invisible to those experiencing it. So it requires that you take a step back and acknowledge that your own self-assessments are largely biased and most likely incorrect. So how do we avoid it? If you're a busy person that wants to max out your potential, then I invite you to sign up for my weekly newsletter, Adaptation. Every Friday, you'll receive a short email from me with tips to improve your mind, body, and recovery. You can sign up now by clicking the link in the show notes or going to www.ericcorum.com. Now, back to the show. First, just knowing the Dunning-Kruger effect exists is a great place to start. Remember, thinking you're bad at something most likely puts you in the middle of the pack, and you're probably just as good at that thing as everyone else. And this is good because you can actually, in a rational way, see your incompetencies. 
so you can drop the ego and improve and move forward. Also, remember, if you think you're exceptional at something, most likely you still have a lot to learn. And this is 100% me. I look back and realize that although I thought I knew a lot 10 years ago, I didn't know much. And I'm often embarrassed of my behavior and the internal dialogue that was going on in my head. It's rather humbling. I look back four months ago and I'm like, man, I really didn't know very much. This keeps you humble, keeps you honest. Finally, you can avoid the Dunning-Kruger effect by being open to feedback, which is hard to do. And I love this quote from the Decision Lab on avoiding the Dunning-Kruger effect. Low performers consistently do not receive criticism well and are chronically disinterested in self-improvement. Rather than brushing off feedback and constructive criticism, attribute the critique to your lack of knowledge and use it mindfully to move yourself forward. If what you learned today about the Dunning-Kruger effect was valuable and you think a friend may benefit, please take a screenshot of the show and share it with them. Also, let me know if you want to learn more about decision making by reaching out on social media or you can send us a note on the website. Thanks again for listening and I'll catch you on the next episode.